Whilst many agents are thinking that the world's coming to an end, some agencies are still doing exceptionally well. Phillips Panther Donnelly are rated as number one agency, as voted by Rate My Agent in New South Wales and Australia for 2017 and 2018. The year-to-date stats are 286 sales worth over 600 million and met in excess of 16,000 buyers through their open homes. Well, joining me on the show tonight is Jason Panzer from Philip Spencer Donnelly, and we've just been joined by News Corp real estate expert Tom Panos. So, Jason, how come you guys are having so much success when the rest of the agents seem to be uh, kind of jumping off a cliff and saying there's no properties going on the market? There's no stock. There's plenty of stock in our business. So I think it's probably our business model, Chris. We've got uh, 50, 50 colleagues, and we're all in there working 12, 14 hour days, making thousands, literally thousands and thousands of phone calls. We're under one roof. Everybody within our business uh, tries to sell, sell our colleagues' stock and uh, all the buyers out there are shared amongst the database. So it's, it's really just a combination of meeting as many buyers as you possibly can, understanding their requirements and then moving, into our, moving them into our colleagues' properties across the board. So Tom, you do a lot of training. Is this Tom Panos 101? Get skilled um, and make thousands of phone calls. I think. Uh, actually, at a top level, that's all it really is. I think at the end of the day, if you put together hard workers, people that are good at negotiating, people that know how to market real estate, I mean, Jason, you'd agree, it's not much more than that. It's having this ability to do it even when you don't feel like doing it. I mean, everyone can work great when life's good and things are flying your way. I mean, the issue is to be able to rock in day in, day out, where real estate is a job of major rejection. And in this marketplace, it is rejection times three, because you've got um, to put a deal together, you've got to be a deal maker, not an order taker. Like in the last two, three years, if you were um, good enough to just rock up, put keys in the door, um, do a lower fee than another agent, you'd, you'd get by. You wouldn't make a lot of money. But all of a sudden, what we're noticing in real estate, if you can't put a deal together, you're being smashed. And that's why I think that what you're going to be seeing in real estate happening is that a lot of the transactions are going to be dominated by a small group of real estate agents. People talk about the 80-20 rule. I take it further. I say the 80% of the 80% and the 20% of the 20% makes it 64 4 I actually think that, and I know that might be a complicated formula. It used to be an accountant. Yeah, you know? clearly. Very I did, did. I did. Two accountants here. Two, yeah. well, I dangerous. did do accounting at university. Just. That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but w what I'm getting at is, guys, that you'll probably find, and what you're saying is, you guys have got uh, an abundance of stock, and the reason why is more reaches more and what actually happens listings attract more listings buyers attract more buyers and you end up having this business that seems to not only just participate in a market it totally dominates a marketplace and that's what you see with big businesses across the country that's right it's like creating a snowball effect correct the more people you meet the more property that you sell the more business that you have now real estate 10 years ago a lot of it was uh, kind of putting uh, adverts in magazines and doing letterbox drops now they've got a lot of these rate my agent type things mm. Are they a true reflection of how good a, an agent really is, or is that just the latest marketing thing that you've got to be part of to get out and, no, and get no, business? No, I'm, I'm a big fan of Rate My Agent. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a fabulous business model. What it, what it does is it, it provides vendor and buyer recommendations about an agent. Uh, I think the agents out there that, that don't participate uh, are doing it for one of two reasons. One, because they don't have many, many recommendations, or for those agents that do have recommendations, maybe they don't have as many recommendations as some of the other top agents, and they don't want to be seen to be number five or six. They prefer for the perception out there of them to be that they're number one. But the true stats will prove where the agents stack up. Now, Tom, whether the agents like these kind of, and not just rate my agent, but I'm sure there's a whole bunch of different sites, is they've got to go where the vendors are looking. If the vendors are looking at sites like that and they're believing them, that's surely where the agents have got to go, isn't it? I think, Chris, we live in a world of reviews. Whether it's travel, you're going to hang around TripAdvisor. You're going to listen to what another person says that you probably haven't met in your whole life, like Chris from Bundaberg, more than what you'll listen to the marketing manager that's produced a brochure from the Hilton Hotel, right? This is the way that we work. People, it's not what you say to the market, it's what other people say to the market. And I think Rate My Agent facilitates a conversation as that. As Jason says, um, you've got to follow the trail of the consumer there is a bunch of real estate agents that say, I don't want to participate in that. Whether they don't have the um, strategy, the skill, whether they want to put the time, whether they don't like coming fourth or fifth, or 
do they struggle to have clients that rave about them? It could be one of those reasons. Ultimately, Chris, um, I would say that the number one reason why someone, it's, it's all about recommendation. Real estate is all about recommendation. It's not opening up the yellow pages, picking three agents and saying, okay, I call three and I like him the best. It seems to be based on what other people say about you. Rate my agent is one of those models. Yep. Now, for the buyers out there that come up to uh, agents like you, top selling agents, have they got any chance of trying to negotiate against you guys? Are there any techniques or are they pretty much no. stuff then you're working for the vendor and you're going to get top dollar? We are absolutely working for the <laughs> vendor and we are going to get top dollar. And we're going yeah. to, if there's another 50 grand in that buyer's pocket, we're going to ensure that it's on the table for our client. That's what we're employed to do. Because that then just leads to the next sale? Well, it's not because it leads to the next sale, but that's what we're employed to do. We're employed to yeah. achieve the best possible result we can for our vendor. And we've built our reputation and our whole brand around our results. Yeah. The, the better results that you get, and the longevity that you have in the business, the more successful your business is going to be. Now, Tom, not everyone's in the best suburb and not everyone hires the best agent. So if you're selling and you're just not getting anyone through the front door, let alone any offers, what can a vendor do? Can I answer that? Yeah. Call Philip Spencer Donnelly. <laughs> That's why he's one of the top agents. <laughs> exactly. Right? You've, you've never got to be shy. Yeah. You've, any opportunity, yeah. always be selling. OK. And, um, and then if that doesn't work... That will work. OK. <laughs> Your plan's got to be... Not to... if it's in the western suburbs, it won't, Jason. It'll still work. <laughs> get, get on a set of scales, right? Get on a set of scales. And what I mean by that is have a true audit. Have a look. There's a good chance that you might not have a price that's realigned with the marketplace, number one. Number two is, is your property presented in a way that it smashes other properties on the weekend when people are looking at it? Uh, number three, um, has your real estate agent gone out like a product manager, like launching a new product, and gone out and targeted the right audience? Have, can, can, can you honestly say that every possible person that would consider your home found out about it? If you've done those things and the real estate agent is still rocking up with high levels of energy, is talking to you most days, giving you feedback, if that real estate agent is actually um, hasn't given up on you, I wouldn't say go leave that agent, right? You go leave another agent, there's a good chance the other agent's strategy is going to be to cut your price and basically uh, realign you with figure. I would probably say do all of those things. Ultimately, there's only two reasons why properties don't sell. It's either the price is too high or the marketing's poor. Look at those two things. Yeah, I think Tom's nailed it there. I think he's exactly what he said uh, in relation to you've got to expose your property to the largest pool of buyers that you can possibly do. If we list a property for a million dollars, what we'll do is we'll jump onto our database. There might be 2,000 buyers that are on our database who have got a million dollars to spend. Every single one of those buyers will receive a phone call from our business to ensure that we've exposed our client's property to the largest audience possible. And just as a very final thing is, can you get away with a 9 to 5 these days or is it effectively a 24-7 job? It's a 24-7 job. It's always been a 24-7 job, Chris. And now with you know the, the digital media and your SMS, text, WhatsApp, all the applications, Real estate agents are contactable and accessible 24-7. Uh, I, I, I don't remember the last time that anybody in my business didn't do a 12 to 14 hour day. We work all day Saturdays and invariably everything we don't, don't have time to achieve between a Monday and a Saturday, we do on a Sunday. Please never offer me a job. <laughs> Jason Panzer, thanks for coming for the 10-year anniversary. Chris. Tom, good to see you as always.